Welcome back everybody to more Pokemon Platinum with the Sugar Six. With me, Daniel. Last episode. Things started well and then proceeded to get significantly less good as time went by. So we're going to have another crack at the Elite Four. Not a huge amount has changed between episodes. Like I did mention last episode. We have a healing move on Blissey. It hurts to get rid of counter, but I put soft boiled instead. Haven't changed anything else on any other Pokemon other than Maple. Rather than having the Razor Fang, which increases flinch chance, we have the Razor Claw instead, which increases critical hit chance. We don't really have a great item for Maple. We do have a Magnet to increase electric type damage. But increasing it by a tiny fraction doesn't matter. The real problem, and this is not, this isn't new information or anything, Base 65 attack being your strongest same type attack bonus move. Just doesn't do it. Even if we had Thunderbolt base 95, it'd be doing about the same damage because of its stat spread. Yeah, a shame. So let's get back to the Elite Four. We're going to probably struggle more with Aaron and Bertha than we did last time due to the change to Blissey. Getting rid of counter will certainly help against Flint. But against these two, I think we're going to have a much more difficult time. Primarily because Heracross and you know, Scizor in this fight can pretty much just sit on us. At least Vesperquin and Drapion don't have strong enough attack stats to really matter too much, and they don't have fire type moves. But we'll, we'll see. If Yanmega wants to go the increase evasion route though i'm all for that we still kept shockwave i ummed and ahed what to do i almost thought about putting water pulse in or even believe it or not solar beam but no i think this is the way to go we're intentionally not going to use light screen i don't want it to use u-turn i want yan mega to stay here as long as i can because it does not matter how many double teams you use shockwave can't miss so what a giant waste of time that is for you. That and this is the only Pokemon on his team that uses special attacks. So not that useful. Now it's going to switch out. Yeah, once it's realized, oh, what have I done? I really hope I did enough damage for Stealth Rock to knock that out on the way in, but we'll see. Gonna do a little bit of chip damage to Heracross that won't hugely matter. But every little counts, I guess. We'll probably do what we did last time and we'll sacrifice something to Heracross so I can switch Lucario in safely. What makes the most sense? Because it's clearly going to use close combat. Probably Virtue, I hate to say. Sorry, buddy, but uh, you are our filler right now. I don't think you'll be very useful for the rest of this battle, so... You just do your best. You will have noticed our levels might be fractionally different from last episode. It won't be by very much. It's purely because there's a trainer just west of Sunny Shore City that gives you 7,200 Poke Dolls, even without the amulet coin. So I just battled him a few times so I could replenish my inventory. Yeah, we should just use X scissor again in case it misses. And it didn't. We didn't get the same luck that we did last time, so... What are you gonna do? We should be able, given that Heracross is at minus one physical defense, I would think that we can take it out in one hit with Blaze Kick. I know it's not same type attack bonus, but we do have a pretty rocking attack stat. Let's see. I don't like that foot imprint on Blaze Kick. <laughs> I really don't. Well, okay there. Awesome. I don't think he has that many moves left to hurt me with. Scramble got you know, Scramble's level up has plus two special attack. Thank goodness. It's gonna need it. Yeah, Drapion can't do anything to us, as we found out last time. Aerial Ace is the only move it's going to use. And we are not concerned whatsoever. The only thing that is concerning is how blooming quick this Pokemon is. <laughs> Looking at it, you wouldn't think it'd be that fast, but then again, you wouldn't think that about Scolipede either. That's one of the fastest in Gen 5. 
Yep, use your citrus berry. We know the routine. Get that into you. We'll do one more exchange before you fall down. Again, I know I said it before. Beautiful animation. I like the yellow background. I like the pulsing effect. It reminds me of Earthbound and Mother 3 in many ways. You played those? Just again, I'm curious. You guys played either of those games? I haven't played Earthbound, but I've played Mother 3. Oh dear. <laughs> well, apparently we did more than half. Sorry, Jan Mega, you did you did something. And this is all the four times weak to fire Pokemon. How convenient that we can kick you with fire. Mmm. Roasted bugs. The depressing future world that we are probably going to be living in. <sighs> Level 53, oh nice, four in attack. And Vespiquen. You only have bug and rock type attacks, so I'm not particularly concerned, and you're slow as slow can be. So, yet again, we're not going to see any of your unique moves, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Oh, poor male combies. They're so useless. Anyway, considering that I thought that would be you know, fairly difficult now that we didn't have counter, it didn't really materialize. Bertha is definitely going to be more difficult, though. So let's get back to it. Come on. Too much talking, not enough doing. All right, let's heal up. I did, uh, for sake of the economy... I did buy Moo Moo Milk. It's much cheaper to buy Moo Moo Milk than it is to buy Hyper Potions. Yes, it means I have to mash A a few more times. But unless your name is Scramble, every Pokemon has less than 200 health. So if they end up fainting and then you use a revive, they don't need more than another 100 hit points of healing. So the Moo Moo Milk just makes economical sense. So that's what we're using. I should probably bring it up to the top. That would be smart. So that's why I haven't done it. I do have a few spare vitamins I can sell if I need to as well in a pinch. I ended up buying a few too many than I needed. Oh well. So again, with this being Bertha next, Stealth Rock's not that important. Really? In the grand scheme of things, it's not particularly important anyway. But what I did learn from last time... It's probably worth it. We're going to lead with grapes. We should probably stat up a little bit more. Because we took the hit surprisingly well from Gliscor. Because we took two of them just by the skin of our teeth. But what I'm thinking we'll do is that rather than using growth just the once, maybe we'll do it... Ideally three, I think, would be the magic number to make sure that we take it out in one hit. But depending on what Whisk Cash does will dictate how brave I am. We're not going to see a lot of grapes, I suspect, in this entire Elite Four and Champion, so you might as well get the most of it you can. Oh, no Sandstorm on turn one either. I will definitely take getting Earth Powered. Just don't decrease my special defense, please. Thank you, you didn't. Yeah, I am A-OK -okay with that decision. Yeah, because it's going to go for Sandstorm this turn instead. What a waste of time. Well, I should be able to do three of these, I think. And be able to take one Ice Fang from Gliscor. I mean, losing our special defense now isn't that important. I just didn't want it to happen turn one in case he went for it again. It is interesting, though. It's using Earth Power when Whisk Cash is better physical attack than special attack. And it's not very effective. It does have Aqua Jet and Aqua Jet, Aqua Tail, but it's chosen to not use it for whatever the reason, so. Pokemon logic sometimes be Pokemon logic. It must be somehow calculating that Earth Power will do more damage. What's my Zen Headbutt? Oh well. Our shell bell doing a bit of work. I wish we could have access to leftovers, but we can't. We also only have one pinch berry, and it's for electric types, which is not very helpful. The Gliscor. 
We outspeed you now. Ha! Huh. <laughs> That's convenient. Can we take you out in one hit? Yeah, you sure can. Didn't realise how close the speed was going to be. That's a really nice positive outcome. As long as we don't get confused, we should just demolish whichever Pokemon she takes out next. Yeah, that Golem, even with Sandstorm, has a snowball's chance in hell. <laughs> Let me throw this. Plus three, 90, base special, attack move, grass types, so it's four times damage. Yeah, good luck with that. Really, the only question now is, do I keep this in? I'm going to be confused, guaranteed, but I'm tempted just to stay in. Doesn't matter that the sandstorm subsided. Oh, that's an interesting decision. We put our, our best Pokemon next. Is it because it has Megahorn? Hmm. I think we stay in and we have a 50-50 of hitting ourselves. And we didn't. Hooray! I don't think it would have mattered. It's just it's going to be cheaper to do it this way. So, so much for Blissey no longer having counter making these battles significantly more difficult, huh? <laughs> I promise it wasn't clickbait. I genuinely thought so. It just hasn't happened that way. And let, let's be real. These two are just the hors d'oeuvre for what is going to be a horrendous battle again against Flint. Where we've only changed a small amount of things and we're kind of hoping for a drastically different result. Not quite the definition of insanity, but getting close. <laughs> I almost tapped out of confusion for the end too. This would not have mattered. I was not concerned about Hippowdon at all. Even if we'd hit ourselves in confusion, it, it, this Pokemon can't do anything to chair him at all. not got enough attack power to worry and conveniently i'm at full health so i don't even have to use a healing item on you well that was easy <laughs> some of the uh words that bertha is saying now feel somewhat more genuine it's amazing what a couple of levels can do so yeah we don't have to use any healing items whatsoever you really did become uh, bruno for a bit there bertha so we now have to think wow <sighs> We, we, there must be a better tactic for taking out Houndoom. My, my concern is I, I can't use Luxray because Luxray has to be there to intimidate Infernape. It will lose to Infernape, but it has to intimidate it. And I have a plan for that. I just have to have enough Pokemon alive to genuinely make it happen. Easier said than done. Now that I don't have Counter 2, it's going to make both Flareon and Rapidash significantly more difficult, but it should make Houndoom slightly easy. Anyway, this is all just thoughts. Let's go into the room and actually go and battle him and see what happens. Oh, beautiful. Right on cue. Uh, my lights have gone to a nice weird rainbow colour right as we go into the furnace room. Let's flip that back. Thank you. I don't want to pay for a new one. <laughs> I do not think it's a good investment. All right, let's try again with Flint. Honestly, we got through three Pokemon more than I thought we might have last last time we tried to face him. So let's see what happens. So clearly we're going to need to go for light screen off the get go. Again, it's going to go for sunny day again. That's perfectly fine. We just hope we don't get burned super early on. We probably will, but let's hope. We have loads of power points for Shockwave. We are going to get our Stealth Rock out so I don't forget. Flamethrower only has a 10% chance to burn. And that's a crit. Yikes. Well, I'm glad I got a healing item because that was rude. It didn't burn me, but the crit's not much better. Let's use soft boiled immediately. What a strange animation that is. Do you wonder what's in these eggs? 
Maybe they're what Cadbury's cremates were like before Cadbury ruined them. Still makes me upset to this day. They used to be so good, and now they're just waxy and bleh. Not burned yet, so that's good. And now we play the waiting game. They do basically no damage to me. I do basically no damage to them. Wow, my damage output is horrendous. And yeah, it's going to be this back and forth. I don't have as many power points in attacking moves as Houndoom does, though. I think it has 15 for Flamethrower. It'll have 10 for Sludge Bomb, which it has for some reason. Uh, I don't remember, is Dark Pulse 15 or 10? Anyway, it's more than I have in having 20 power points through Shockwave, and it was technically 18 off the start. Are you going to use Sunny Day this turn? You are, so that's a waste of a turn. The only turn I have to be wary of is the turn where it will use Flamethrower on the turn that I have to put Light Screen back up. But I have to keep an eye out, because it's probably going to be Light Screen and then Soft Boiled the following turn. Yeah, so I did 34 damage. 34! Nothing. Then again, I'm probably doing like, what, 18, 20 damage back? Probably not even. Sunlight is still strong. I'm going to heal up on this turn because I believe next turn is when my light screen wears out. I don't want to run the risk of getting critted. I haven't been burned yet, though. I thought I might put the mockers on myself when I mentioned it. Yeah, there's light screen. So this next turn, it'll do some reasonable damage. But nothing, nothing too scary. Yeah, not, not bad. And we get another eight turns of... Light screen, hooray for light cray, uh, cray? Light clay, it is cray that light clay is so helpful. That's not what I meant to say. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Ah, <laughs> oh, saying words in English properly. That's for the birds. You're probably going to heal, so you're gonna heal up this turn. But you also don't have any sun up either. This may be a good turn to try and get Lucario in as it happens. You know what? Why not? It should heal this turn. It'll want to put the sun up next turn, but it probably won't. It'll probably go for flamethrower, but we have light screen up. We shouldn't get taken out in one hit. This is probably the safest time I'm genuinely going to be able to switch in, so I might as well take advantage of it now. And I'd like to keep Plissy alive for Magmortar, which is it. I know I'm before, but that's his ace, and it only has special moves. So I would really, really like for it to be alive then, if I can. If we even get that far, <laughs> no guarantees. Because this Flareon does have overheat. I don't think it'll be able to take me out still though. I, I think we need to make hay while the light screen's up. He will use overheat, I'm sure, but we need to keep firing away while we can. Yeah, this is going to hurt. Did you? Oh my word! I said that wasn't even a crit. Yikes! And you have quick attack as well. Oh! I'm gonna have to use extreme speed. I don't know if it's gonna take it out or not. Oh, thank goodness! Because <laughs> now at least. When I get invariably smacked by Rapidash, there's no point in me switching out or anything. It's this really low health Pokemon that's going to take the hit, not a full health Pokemon that gets wrecked. 
Can we get an extreme speed in there and do some reasonable damage? That was quite a lot. It's using bounce. Okay. That's not... Is that something that's of any use to me? I mean, Maple doesn't take a lot of damage from it, but I need this... Ugh. Hmm. No, it doesn't really help. I'm thinking about it. Pretty sure that his Infernape has Mac Punch. And it'll be quicker than me, so it will win the priority war. I wish I could do something with that, but I can't. So I might as well use a move that I don't... Oh, it outs... Is this a speed tie? I think the Rapidash and the Lucario just had a speed tie. Ah, okay. That's, that's perfectly fine. What speed are you? 123. <laughs> Technically, Grapes outspeeds you and will not be useful in this battle at all. So we might as well get you out there and just use nature power. Wait, have, what? No, I, I got that all wrong. Extreme speed was why I outsped rapid dash. It's not a speed tie, but this is still fine. As, as weird as it is, because the amount of recoil that rapid dash is going to take should put it into healing range. Yeah, that's actually okay. My own mistake turned out to be kind of useful in its own weird way. Because now I can put Reflect up. Yeah, because it did use Bounce. He didn't heal it. I thought he was either going to heal it or use Bounce, and he did... Yeah, Bounce, okay. That's fine. So, let's take it out when it bounces back onto me, which sounds disgusting. <laughs> With extra sensory, it didn't paralyze me, thank you. So now the question is, is he going to bring his ace out before Infernape? It's a distinct possibility. Yes, he did. Okay. So this changes how the entire dynamic of this battle is going to go. Because clearly we need to switch out, because we're going to get absolutely, well, scrambled. Otherwise, so we'll bring out Scramble. Magmortar can't do anything to Blissey. It's just going to do the same thing that... Houndoom did, minus the setting up Sunny Day part. So... Light screen, I, I was tempted, I was like, do I light screen first, do I heal first? It's six or one half, dozen or the other. If I get critted, I'm going to get ruined either way. Okay, there's light screen, now we're going to heal up. It's yours using solar beam. Well, that's nice of it, because that's a massive waste of time. Thank you for the free opportunity to heal. That makes no sense. Solar beam will do less damage because it's only 120 base power with no same type attack bonus. What was he thinking? Yeah, I don't get that one. <laughs> that did absolutely nothing. And he does have a... He has a citrus berry because it's his ace. We're in the embarrassing situation where we might genuinely run out of power points for Shockwave. I did not think coming into the Elite Four that I might have to use a PP up on Shockwave of all moves, but maybe I did. Next turn, we'll heal up. I hate the face on Magmortar. It's just... I guess it makes sense for Flint because they both look like clowns, but I don't like it. Do not like it at all. Electivire is a far cooler looking Gen 4 evolution based on a Gen 1 Pokemon. In my opinion. Neither of them were particularly competitively useful, but... That was more a case of the environment not being very... ...accommodating, as opposed to them being inherently rubbish. Magmort is just too slow, and being a slow fire type is a tricky game to play. And as for Electivire, it's just a jack of all trades, master of none. It has a fantastic move pool, but just isn't quite good enough at using any of them effectively. What a shame. The 
first Pokemon I saw in Pokemon Battle Revolution that used cross chop actually as it happens, which is a a move that we could have had. It's an egg move for Riolu, but wasn't what I went for. Only having five power points is just a killer in game. Light screen wore off. I was hoping it might use Solar Beam that turn like a dum dum, but it didn't. Light screen up. Awesome. Down to eight power points. Not good. And it's definitely going to heal this when it gets into critical health range. There's absolutely no doubt about it. We're going to heal ourselves next turn as well. Might have been better getting rest, you know, because it would have wasted more turns. But for the sake of the viewing... Oh, it's Hyper Beam. Okay. For the sake of the viewing experience, I didn't really want to do that. 37 damage on that Hyper Beam. <laughs> How quick do you think that Pokemon is? Yeah, my two fast Pokemon have been knocked out. I don't think I would have a Pokemon that would outspeed it. I'm not even convinced even with them alive I'd have a Pokemon that outspeeds it. Although, my is not that quick. I'd love to switch something else in. But I'm not convinced that I'll have... Yeah, I can't, because Scramble's just going to be completely useless against Infernape. He does not have a Mixape. He has a purely physical Infernape. Yeah, there's his heal. We've got that out of the way. I'm going to try and predict when he's going to use Solar Beam, which is going to be easier said than done. So I'm going to wait until the light screen wears off. Make sure we put light screen up. And then it's going to be a case of trying to predict what he's going to use. The only move he hasn't used yet is Thunderbolt. Not that that would have done any better. It's just something he hasn't used. He used everything else. Yeah, he has no way of dislodging me. Not a huge fan of that animation. I don't think the Solar Beam one's particularly impressive. It's okay. Well, yeah, Shockwave I think is better for sure. Still have not run out. Yeah, okay. Of light screen time. He must be running low on power points as well. Probably why he's spreading them out. And that's one advantage of having Solar Beam and Hyper Beam. They're two turn attacks in their own way when you think about it. There's light screen wearing off. Perfect. Let's get light screen up. Because we're practically out of power points, now we're really going to have to find a switch. Can't use Virtue. Cheese would probably take the solar beam fine. I mean, we're going to have to try. We can't stall him out forever. We're running out of power points faster than he is. Let's see how much damage this does, because then they'll be able to gauge, can I take a flamethrower? So on 111. Yes, we can take one. I'm not convinced Extra Sensory will be able to take it out. So I'd really, really like to try and put you to sleep, please. Thank goodness. Okay. I'd also love if I could get Reflector, but I'm way too critical on health to run that risk. Oh, we got a crit. <laughs> I don't think that really matters, but that does make life at least fractionally less scary. This is still terrifying. Cheese is level 51. Not going to learn anything. Infernape. So not his ace, but definitely his most terrifying Pokemon. 
we don't have the ability to use reflect because whatever we if we stay in we get wiped out that is inevitable because Ching, uh, Chai Mecco is the one that's in, he's probably going to use Flare Blitz. That's pretty inevitable. So as ridiculous as this looks, I'm going to switch in Blissey. He's going to use Flare Blitz. He's going to take an absolute ton of recoil damage because I just have an enormous pool of hit points. Yes, it wasn't completely full, but he's still going to take a heck of a ton of recoil. A lot. Now I can switch in Maple, who yes is weak to the Earthquake that he has, but this will give me an Intimidate, so I should be able to take one of them. You, you, no kidding, it is blazing. <laughs> He'll be able to take one hit. But we're not even going to do that. What we're going to do is switch back to Cheese. He should use Earthquake. Which he did. He'll then probably go for Flare Blitz, but we're going to switch in. I want to switch in Maple, but if I get burned, this entire plan dies. So it may be worth keeping Cheese in, taking the Flare Blitz, and then using Maple to take out with another Intimidate. Yeah, that's what we'll do. So this Flare Blitz is going to take out Cheese. Uh, he said, "Yeah, he was Cheese." My word, I'm losing my brain. I can't remember the name of my own Pokemon. <laughs> The cheese is gone. Now we can flip Maple back in, get another Intimidate off. So now we should definitely be safe. And then Spark should be for the win. Please don't crit me. Okay, you didn't. Even if you burn me, it's fine. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> that was absolutely terrifying but we did manage to beat flint i don't believe it i lost i didn't take you for granted but i didn't expect you to win i'd never even considered it i'm blown away by this you and your pokemon are hot stuff i didn't believe it either to tell you the truth matey burnt right down to cinders the devastation of our team we have virtue who didn't get involved maple who did the final act and everybody else got wrecked i will heal between episodes and then we get to take on lucian who we haven't seen yet so hopefully you enjoyed that team's doing great give them the old likes they're doing a lot better than i thought they were hopefully i'll see you next time have a great rest of your day thank you for watching the video and if you'd like to see more feel free to stick around